glad you guys liked the uh, drum mag video. I didn't know how you were going to take that because that was a little, little different. But uh, you know, after I looked at the drum, I'm like, you know what? This ain't something you just throw, you just throw bullets in and just lock it up and go. This is a system to this. And as long as there's a step system to it, it's worth doing a video for. So, you know, I'm glad you guys liked it. I didn't know you were going to feel about that. Anyway. Uh, this is my Colt Commander. This is an 80 series Colt Commander. Uh, I love this pistol. You guys know I do. Um, one thing about Colts is they're not made really tight like Kimber's or, um, of course, Ed Brown. And uh, But the Ed Brown's is a whole different story. That thing is so tight and so refined. It, you know, if that jams here and there, you, you can't even think about that. I mean, if it jammed like... If the Ed Brown jammed like within 50 rounds, like five times or something, you might have an issue there, you know. But we're talking about 300 rounds of one jam. It's, it's, the gun's just breaking in. It literally needs to break in. Truly, really does. There's some guns they say they need to break in, and, you know, it, they don't need that much break in. But the Ed Brown definitely needs it. So, it's just so tight. Um, it's so tight. I need a wrench to take the. I need a wrench to take the bushing off. It's the first 1911. I had to use a wrench to take the bushing off. It's really tight. So give that gun. You got to cut that thing some slack. Don't say, "Wow, well, it's the most expensive gun and it's the only one that failed." No, that's not. The, you're looking at it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Uh, it needs to work itself. It has to. It has to. The slide needs to move and. The, the parts need to rub together, and it's a good 500 rounds, you know, for before that gun be, starts becoming really reliable. Now, since there was only one jam, uh, it might have been a, a messed up round. There's a lot of times where I bought Winchester White Box, probably about two times so far, and I just started buying it, where the, the bullet was pushed in too far of the brass, it wasn't the correct length, that could cause a jam. And I think, uh, or undercharged round, could cause it you know what I'm saying so we really don't know what it is so we're just going to continue to fire it and see how it does but the next 1911 to go to the range is going to be this Colt here uh, this Colt has been uh, flawless uh, it has the best trigger it's such a sweet ass trigger um, I have I can control this gun better than any gun in my safe I just I am in complete command of this of this pistol when I'm firing it more than any other guns in there, okay? I just know when it's going to go bang, and I just, it just, uh, I can hit my target with it. You know what I'm saying? Better. Now, the Ed Brown trigger is so light, it's so light, it surprises me every time it falls. Now, once again, I know a lot of you guys that shoot say being surprised is the correct way, but not with me, it ain't. I want to know when the triggers, when the hammer's going to fall. I want to know when the hammer's going to fall. I'm talking about for bullseye shooting, not for self-defense, not for combat, not for any of that shit, not for running and gunning. I'm talking about taking your time, one time at a sh one shot at a time, bullseye shooting. If I know when the hammer's going to fall, I have a better chance of hitting that bullseye than if I don't know when the hammer's going to fall. I know when this hammer's going down. I know it. That's why. If you look at all the shooting videos, this one does the best because the trigger and I know when the hammer's going to fall. That's what I come up with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's one of the things I do when I shoot. Uh, it might be back backwards to you, but it works for me. Everyone has, everyone's different. Everyone's different. Okay. Uh, what I love about this gun is it has a unique um, throated feed ramp it's it's not a feed it's a throated barrel doesn't really have a feed ramp but there's notches out of it that help it with reliability now a couple guys said that them notches are for hollow points and they might be right I don't know I didn't look into it but uh, this is a beautiful 1911 Bill gave me these when I first met him three years ago they nice they look good on the gun beautiful and these are, uh, I think these are Packmire, so they have that palm swell right here. And believe it or not, that helps me too when I'm shooting because it fills up my hand. 
I, I freshened up the sights again with a, not again, once since I had it with the white acrylic paint. And uh, they're hanging in there. Um, what's, what's good about Colts is, and if, you, and if you think, they're made a little loose. They're made a little loose because believe it or not, when they're made a little loose, it does make it more reliable. It's the same principle as an AK-47. AK-47 is made loose. So if, do, if dirt gets in the grooves, there's nothing going to stop it from operating. You understand? And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why there's zero failures with this so far. So we're going to take this to the range tomorrow and see if it performs again. I got an ACT mag in here sent to me from a really good friend and uh, down south a buddy of mine sent me this ACT mag. It's the uh, Parkerized one. I like the Parkerized one. And that's awesome magazine. This is the mag I've been using the whole time with this gun. And another thing is, I'll show you that throated barrel, that cutout. Uh, not sure what it's for. Some people say it's for uh, hollow points. Makes sense, it might be. You know what I mean? Another good thing about this gun, it's made loose, but not too loose. Uh, it's real easy to take down. Yeah, you can. Uh, The bushing comes right out. Like the Ed Brown is so tight, I have to use a wrench to get the bushing out. It's really tough to get it out. But that's the difference, you know. Okay. And we'll just take it down real quick. Just show you the barrel. Any Colt I ever had always came apart easy with 1911s. Because like I say, I think the tolerance are a little bit little bit uh, bigger than, uh, looser than uh, the Kimbers and the and the uh, other high-end pistols, but let me see here. I don't know if you could see that. It's a lot of grease. See how that looks? See how it's cut out? Look, look at the part where it feeds the feeds the round in. See how it's kind of like an octagon shape, and then right here, it's cut out. It has like a, it's a feed ramp, but not really. And that's the only thing unique about this gun compared to all my other 1911s. None of my other 1911s have a barrel like that. So is maybe it's that. Maybe that's why the gun runs so well and it, you know, and it's uh, it doesn't fail. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna be shooting a lot of guns, and I'm sorry my range sucks. You know, if if I could have a, a backyard like Hickok and Brandon 401 guys, if I had that kind of setup, dude, this channel would be on a whole other level. I'm telling you, it would be. And you never know, things might that that might happen. You know, I do know people, so let's see what happens. You know, if I can get a setup like that, because uh, I'd love to shoot some steel and objects and all that stuff. It's just more exciting than paper and five rounds at a time. You know what I'm saying? I want you to shoot five rounds at a time. You know what I mean? So, you know. But see how nice this comes apart and goes together? So it's kind of loosely made. Same with the, uh, you know what else is loosely made is the, uh, the, the Springfield GI models. But to me, they're a little, they're a little too loose. I mean, they're really loose, man. But they, but they, they run and run and run. But they, when you're walking with it, you can hear it rattle. I mean, that's how loose they are. It kind of bothers me. So I really wanted to get a uh, Colt World War II uh, replica. But they're a lot of money. They're a G-note. That's a lot of money. So this is just a quick video. I'm telling you what's going on, what I'm going to be doing. And uh, we're just going to shoot the guns and uh, see which one fails first. Okay, right now the Ed Brown failed first so far, and that has 300 rounds to it or 250 or something. This has, let me see, what's this have? This has 250 through it, not one failure yet. So there ain't that many rounds to it. The Glock 30, the Glock 23 has got 500 rounds with zero failures. Uh, that's that's awesome. Um, the Glock 36 has 100 rounds to it, no failures, good. Uh, the M&P and the XD, they, they still have 50 rounds through them. So that was just like a test for carry you know what I mean so they don't have that many rounds to them yet so we'll see what happens 
But remember, I mean, I can't be doing shooting videos every day. It's too expensive. So we're just going to do it periodically, and I'm going to keep updating you on uh, on the performance. And I promise I'm going to give you honest answers of what's going on. Okay? And that's it. It's just a, a quick update. And uh, I'm glad you guys liked that uh, AK-47 drum video. I don't know if you would like that. I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. That was fun. All right, guys. See you guys soon.